It's important to me to be loose and relaxed when I start a studio session, to leave my cares of the day at the door and just paint for the joy of it. And so what I like to do is I always start with a warm up and I'm going to show you one of my favorite warm ups today as I try out some brand new paints, American Journey Watercolors by Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. Let's get started. Today I'm working with American Journey watercolor paint from Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. I have never tried these paints before and I'm excited to give them a try today. As you can see, I've received an assortment of colors and I didn't pick them out in advance, but I'm excited to try some of them. I have some colors that I frequently use, um, Thalo, Thalo Blue, which is called Joe's Blue, uh, Quinacridone Gold, uh, I have two hues of that, so that'll be fun to try, uh, Dioxazine Violet, which is titled Royal Amethyst, and uh, and then we'll be trying the other colors as well and just seeing if I can I'll have some fun with them. They come in two sizes. This is a 37 milliliter tube, which is quite large for watercolor, and then the more standard 15 milliliter tube. And the American Journey watercolors come in over 100 colors, so there are lots to choose from. And uh, but I think I can have some fun with the colors I have here today. I have pre-squeezed them into my palette and allowed them to dry overnight, so they're still a little bit soft and uh, squishy if I poke them with my finger. Uh, they'll harden up a little bit more as as they dry and as they settle set in the in the palette. But for my purposes today, they're ready to use. And I've arranged them in my palette basically the same kind of way I arrange all my paints. I try to keep them set in color families. So I've got my reds here, my yellows over here, blue in the middle. In between the yellow and the blue, I have my green. And then in between the red and the blue, I have my violets. So that's kind of my very loose color wheel, how I arrange my paint in my palette. And there's some extra spaces that I can fill as I add to my collection of American Journey watercolors. Provided, of course, that I love them the way I hope I will. I always moisten my paint before I start painting. That just loosens up the top layer of pigment and makes it easier for me to uh, load my brush with rich color. And what we're going to do today is I don't really have a plan except for learning these paint, uh, learning the different colors and trying them out and observing their properties. And so I'm going to just start with a very loose and uh, fluid wash of color. And I'm going to start with, I think, the raw umber violet because I'm just so intrigued by that title. I've never tried a raw umber violet before. And it goes on, as you can see, like a rich... Um, kind of a deep purple red in a very earthy kind of hue. Uh, first thing I'm noticing just as I start adding water is that the color does flow. I'm seeing right away that by moistening my pigment I'm seeing some movement of color. So let's see if that applies to other hues as well. Let's add some green gold. And this green gold is a little earthier than the Daniel Smith green gold that I'm accustomed to. It has a little bit more of a kind of brownish tinge to it, which actually pairs really nicely with the American Journey raw umber violet. And we'll go to the Quinn Gold Deep. Add some there too. I probably won't use all the colors in this little warm up. It's just my opportunity to get to know a few of them based on how I think they'll play together and I'm kind of sticking mostly with the warm earth tones right now. And this kind of thing that I'm doing where I'm just laying some brush strokes on the paper, letting colors mix and mingle with a lot of fluidity, this is what I would call a studio warm up. When I come into the studio after not having painted for a day or two, uh, I always start by warming up. I find that when I come into the studio, uh, I want to turn off everything that's kind of happened in my day and I want to be able to get creative and it's very hard to do that without first giving yourself the chance to relax and loosen up and so I like to just play with some color um, with no set plan instead of going straight to a painting I've been working on or starting something big and important and new I want to just uh, loosen up and explore and find my creativity again. It's not, sometimes it's hiding and you gotta kinda coax it out. And we need something that's gonna make us really go, 
and gasps. So let's find, uh, let's try to go with a little bit more of the rich raw umber violet before we introduce a new color. And that gives us a really nice dark. Let's add a little bit of the royal amethyst or dioxazine. And dioxazine is always a rich, deep purple, and it's no no different with American Journey. Look at how rich and dark that is, that first pure stroke, adding water to let it flow. Some really gorgeous things happening there. So what I'm observing so far as I'm trying out my American Journey pigments is that the color saturation is, they're highly pigmented. I'm getting lots of rich color with, uh, without having to spend a lot of time trying to pick color up on my brush. So that's really important to me. I want to have rich colors at my fingertips so that I can choose to dilute and make them paler by adding water or I can use them nice and rich and let them flow across the paper. And I'm really liking what's happening on my paper right now. Isn't that fun? Um, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. And uh, you, you may already know that salt creates texture in watercolor. Those little granules spread, push the pigment and water and create little sparkles. I try to use a light touch. I'm not just spreading it willy-nilly or thickly on my paper. Just little, one grain at a time. And we'll see how they react to the American Journey paints. Really liking this area here. The paper here was where I put my first brush strokes and what happens is those early brush strokes that water had a chance to absorb into the paper so that successive additions of pigment gave me this um, really soft effect. The color just bleeds really beautifully in this area which I'm really liking. And um, a lot of the quinacridone deep gold like right here, um, here it's kind of bled into the rest of the painting. Here it stands out a little bit, and I kind of like that. I want that strong orange to be showing up on my paper. So I'm going to just spatter a little bit of orange for contrast. I'm saying orange because it really is kind of a, a yellow orange that's really quite beautiful. And yeah, I'm liking that. There are so many things you can do to create texture and when you're playing with a wash that doesn't have any set objectives like this one, I get to just try out different ideas. So that means I can grab my spray bottle and I can mist my paper and just by adding that little spatter of water I get this other effect of texture similar to the salt but it's got its own kind of magic as well. And. I think it's time to let it dry. We're going to move on and do another little uh, test of our American Journey watercolors, but as you can see, a, a fun warm-up like this lets you see how colors play together. What I'm seeing from the American Journey colors is that the color stays nice and rich. There's lots of movement. As I add water, we see the color spread and bleed. Whether or not it reacts with salt, we'll find out as it starts to dry. I would say that the saturation I'm getting is equivalent to what I see in my other paint brands, the so Daniel Smith, Windsor & Newton, uh, Sennelier, Schmincke. Beautiful, rich colors that I can let play on the paper. When I review colors, I'm not really an academic about it. I don't tend to go to color charts and swatches. I would much rather just start using the product and then see how how it reacts in a real life painting situation. And uh, so that's what I'm doing here with these American Journey colors today. If you want more detailed analysis, uh, there are lots of art or lots of reviews on YouTube and online that you can check out to find more specific information about the light fastness of the paint, the pigment properties and so forth. Um, handprint.com is a great one to try.
And so right now I'm just trying out some of the blues. That's the, I've actually mixed all three of the blues I was given, the ultramarine blue, the Joe's blue or phthalo blue, blue and the blue stone. Blue stone has a little bit of a greenish tinge to it if I, oh but I love that swish as you dot the color in on the paper. Um, but as I added it, it did seem like it had kind of a little bit of a greeny, greeny gray hue, which I think can make for a really fun dark sky. I can add a little bit of dioxazine violet or royal amethyst to get a deeper blue. And I love painting skies because there's so much opportunity for drama. As you can see, it's kind of my thing. And I'm going to blot a little bit, see how it lifts. Phthalo blue is generally a bit of a staining color, so we, need, we can be aware of that. It tends to want to soak in. And stay put. Anytime I'm blotting like this, I'm removing moisture from the paper and that helps the color to stay put where I've placed it. Uh, I'm going to make some bushes down below here. Uh, I'm going to mix my green gold this time with a little bit of my blue, ultramarine blue there. A little bit more green gold. If I'm not loving that blue, I can add some quinacridone gold deep. And that's giving me a different just a nice kind of earthy green. And by painting my bushes right now, they're going to blend with my sky and be very soft. And I don't know, they might end up looking more like grasses than bushes. In fact, what if I use some very fun brush strokes to create that effect? And then maybe we can put a tree over here. Let's see. Grab some of the raw umber violet. Too much, actually. It's a very saturated color. Um, and that mixture of the raw umber violet and the green gold is a little bit too orangey. And if something is too orange, I can tone that down by adding its complement. And the complement to orange is blue. So by adding a little ultramarine, I should be able to get kind of a neutral. I'm looking for kind of a brown. And as you can see it right away, it starts to look more brown. So a good rule of thumb is if you're looking at a color and going, oh, it's too yellow, then you can add a bit of violet and get that neutral. If it's too green, add a bit of red and so forth. You're always adding, adding in the complement to tone down or neutralize a color that is too much of something else. So I'm just putting in a tree here, some interesting brush strokes. We're going to give the tree a different green than the greens down here. And I don't have a lot of green in my American Journey uh, product samples here, but I can make my own. It's not hard to do. Let's grab the Light Harvest Wheat. It's Quinn Gold, and then the descriptor says Light Harvest Wheat. And that gives us this beautiful, kind of a bright, similar to raw sienna, but a little bit brighter. And let's add some... Thalo blue this time, Joe's blue. Let's see what we get that gives us a really bright green. Um, let's try it and see how it looks. And again, I'm not waiting for anything to dry, which is giving me lots of softness where all the elements in the painting kind of fit together because they're all kind of bleeding in a few in a few different areas. And uh, I'm going to go right into that green that I just painted with uh, the Quinn Gold Light Harvest Wheat. Dot in a little bit of that. This is a more opaque color, so one thing I'm noticing right away. So it stands out quite strongly against the green. And opaque colors tend to do that, even if they're lighter than the original, the dark, than the color they're going on top of you'll see them still kind of standing out if they have opacity to them. And it's nice to use colors with a mixture of transparency and opacity because then you get different effects that make your painting more interesting. 
When you're painting with a lot of water like this, sometimes those colors will bleed down into uh, an area of dry paper where they'll stop. The dry paper serves as a boundary and uh, they'll make a little bead there and sometimes that bead is just a little bit too much dark color or sometimes you're worried about it dripping. You can use your brush as a sponge to suck up excess color and using, you know, we're not always putting paint down with our brush. Sometimes we're lifting paint up rather than than applying paint and that gives us more versatility in our painting. Lifting that paint means we leave kind of a little bit of a stain of pigment behind. I'm going to go in with the straight raw umber, raw umber violet to create some shadow there. And some contrast. Adding those darks will make this area of the painting stand out a little bit more. And I think I'll lift some paint down here as well. So you want your brush to be thirsty. That means most of the moisture has been blotted out so it can act kind of like a sponge. And we're going to add some spatter. And I'll actually just use my, my toothbrush right on the pigment, mix it up a little bit, and then I can spatter it onto the paper. And if you're concerned about overspray, um, if you don't want to get your sky dirty, you know, cover it with a piece of scrap paper to prevent that from happening. And I be fairly careful to direct my spray. You can also, if you're very quick, blot up any excess spray that goes onto your sky area. Time to let this dry and then come back and add any finishing details. I have two fun little paintings I've done with American Journey watercolors. I haven't felt like I've needed to change my painting approach at all and that's my main uh, criteria for analyzing whether or not I like a product. Does it necessitate me having to work in a different way to compensate for something that's not quite right about that product and this isn't happening here. I'm really enjoying these American Journey paints. One thing I really like is the giant size of these tubes. They are just so much bigger than some of the other paint brands that I have and that means that if I love a color I don't have to worry about running out for a long time. It means that when I teach a workshop I can share my paint and again not worry about running out and let other students have a try uh, so that they can evaluate the product as well. So a second aspect of trying out a new paint is just taking a look at how it looks after it's dried. Do we have a lot of fading of the color? Is it not as brilliantly saturated as when it went on wet? With watercolor you do expect some of the color to um, be a little more subdued once it's completely dry. Of course, when something's shiny and wet, it's going to appear darker. However, as this has dried, I still have the same uh, lovely rich colors that I started out with. We'll take a look at my loose and fluid wash, which has had the chance to dry as well. And I just zoomed right in here so you can see a little bit of the detail up close because I'm always looking at how a pigment uh, granulates, how it, what kind of texture we get as it dries, how the colors mingle, and there's a really beautiful little uh, a, a wash of color here where we have these little tendrils of the green gold, I think, bleeding into the raw umber violet. Really beautiful. Where I spritz the painting with water, we see those little sparkles showing through. And then the salt effect, which I still have a little salt left on the paper, uh, the salt effect is absolutely gorgeous here. You can see how big and bold those little sparkles of salt are, have become. So that's really pretty. And I haven't lost a lot in terms of color richness. It's not going to be as dark as when it's, it's saturated and moist. However, I do still have uh, a good equivalent of color on my paper. So I want to put some more paint on this, on this painting. I want to develop it a little further. And when you have a loose and fluid beginning to a painting, um, something that's very relaxed and, and abstract, 
moving on from there you can do almost anything you want with it and so often what I'll do is just take one of those first warm-ups and I might turn it and look for possibilities what is this a painting of what do I see emerging and in this case I'm not sure what I want to make of this uh, actually I kind of like it turned sideways like this there's almost this feel like it's this wild sky and landscape, which I love landscapes, so there's always that. Um, or I could just stick with the original shape that I started with here. And, um, and it doesn't have to become a thing either. I could keep this very loose and intuitive. One thing I like to do is when I'm building on an original wash, I try not to change up the colors overly much. I want to use what's already on the paper. Um, adding new colors at this stage is going to is often going to make your painting feel a little bit confusing uh, because you want you won't necessarily have the color unity you started with. So nothing's really jumping out at me uh, for ways to develop this further and so a lot of the time I might just walk away and give it some more time to kind of percolate in my mind but I want to play with it, play with it a bit today and so maybe we'll just add a little bit more color and see what we end up with and I'm going to start by just painting over the colors that I originally placed with more of that same color so that's starting with the quinacridone deep gold and one thing that I, I do see here that I want to change a little bit is the salt uh, the salt arrangement here is very bold and very bright and it looks like the salt effect and when I have an effect that I've used in my painting that kind of stands out as oh look she used salt in her painting a lot of times I want to kind of camouflage it a little bit I want I don't want the gimmick the effect to be the focal point of my painting I want it to just reinforce my painting so by putting a wash of color over top I'm going to send that salt that salt texture to, a little bit to the background and that's going to keep it from kind of taking over and being too dominant in the painting and because watercolor is transparent and my American Journey paints are transparent just like all my other watercolor paints the the layers that I put on now are going to they're going to go over top of the existing layers but they're also going to show the underneath layers through and so I get to add more paint make my colors richer and deeper but I also get to enjoy what's already underneath without losing it and that's something I really love about watercolor these are very new paints here in my palette and so as I've used them and spritzed them with water and allowed that water to sit the pigment has re-wet almost to the same fluidity as fresh from the tube and so right now as I'm painting with the green gold I'm seeing little chunks of pure pigment sitting on my paper and it's really kind of beautiful that pure pigment will won't move as much as if I was using a more fluid wash of pigment and so I can get some dry brush effects even right on top of a wet wash which is something I like about using pure pigment in my paintings so I've kind of moved along this edge here and, and even though I'm painting abstractly I'm thinking about composi composition and I love this feeling of this curve moving along the paper and uh, and then because I have this angled line here of the violet I almost have this V shape which is really interesting and so I'm going to continue to work with that as I develop this painting a little bit more and I think actually I think I'm going to grab the dioxazine violet right here and create almost maybe a flower shape here but very very abstract but just by using the side of my brush I can create a kind of a petal shape right in here we're going to bleed some of that into the center 
soften some of it. Look at how the color rushes in. It's really beautiful. And I think I'll add some of that deep gold. Oh, that's really pretty. And again, using that sticky pure pigment gives me m patches of color that don't move nearly as much as a more fluid wash of color would. And I like that. So one thing I am liking about the binder in the American Journey paints is it does allow you to have that whoosh of color when you place it on a wet wash. That's really pleasing, really fun to work with. And I just keep adjusting the angle of my paper as I'm painting. I'm painting on a watercolor block today, which gives me a nice uh, substance to hold in my hand. And I know that my paper isn't buckling because it's mounted on all four sides to the block. And the block I'm using today is made by Hanamula. We'll be, I'll be reviewing them a little later this summer and giving you my impressions of the paper. So I am kind of thinking floral for this and I tend to paint a lot of florals because they're just really fun to do and one of my happy places as an artist and as you paint, you're going to develop your own happy places, things that you love to paint, that you paint really kind of comfortably and are more likely to be experimental in. And those are all things that can help you to know what, where your personal style might lie or what your favorite subject to paint might be. And I'm seeing this flower here. I'm seeing kind of leaf shapes over here and that might mean that there's more flowers in this area. Just a very casual shape there. I don't want to paint a whole bunch of individual flowers. They tend to they would tend to distract from each other. So we're just going to suggest a few additional shapes somewhere else. Even just a little line like that can indicate a flower in the background. And I keep going back and forth between the raw umber violet, the quinacridone gold deep. I haven't really used a lot of green gold here except for those few streaks of pure pigment on that side. And uh, I might want a little bit of pure pigment on this side too. In fact, let's see what it does when I place it on this darker color. Maybe we'll do some leaf shapes up th through this wet wash. Using the side of my brush, I can press it down on the paper and just create a leaf shape with a single a bit of pressure on my brush. It's the contrasts that make a painting really special and so I want to watch to not add so many dark colors that I lose my contrast between light and dark. We need those lights and darks in order to make the painting uh, grab the eye. More leaf shapes on this side. Oh, I like those. Your leaves don't always have to be green. Changing up the color can help you keep your painting balanced. 
while it, in composition while also adding you know a hint of color where it might have been needed in the painting and using that straight raw umber violet over here just gives us this really great uh, branch here that I'm kind of loving so in my experiments in my experiments with American Journey watercolors today, I've tried a wet wash, a very fluid wash. I've tried salt spatter, um, charging fresh color into a moist wash, um, crisp lines, working with mixtures of pigments, and there's some really interesting effects that I've gotten. And um, working with wet on wet and also dry, um, dry paper and a nice fluid wash. I've tried lifting and lifting out so I've tried lots of different things with the with the American Journey watercolor what would motivate me to buy this paint is not just the uh, rich color saturation but the movement of the pigment when I touch it into a wet wash it does that whoosh thing that I love it has that beautiful dispersion we have big tubes that hold lots of paint that I can uh, count on being able to use for a long time we have colors that keep their keep their saturation and richness after drying. They have equivalent light fastness ratings to other brands on the market, so I don't have to worry about uh, them fading over time. Again, do your research if you're concerned about light fastness. Uh, these this kind of information is readily available online, uh, usually from the paint manufacturer that you're ordering from. Most of all, what would motivate me to use these paints and to use them, um, add them into my permanent uh, palette collection is that I didn't have to change my approach in order to paint with them. I mentioned that before and I think it's worth saying again, I didn't feel like I had to use more paint to get rich colors. I didn't feel like the paints behaved differently and I had to change my responses and my reactions as I was painting. So all in all, they're, they're going to incorporate well with the palette that I already have. I have a few colors that uh, I'm going to need to try uh, that I didn't get a chance to try today for this review. Uh, I love trying colors that I've never used before and I'm looking forward to exploring them more. The raw umber violet especially is one of my favorites. I love the earthiness of it and the way it paired so well with both purple and with uh, the orange oranges that I was using, the quinacridone gold. So I'm looking forward to exploring these colors more and just having fun with my American Journey watercolors. You can find American Journey watercolor at Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. And don't forget to enter my watercolor summer challenge where I'm giving away a great big watercolor artist's productive artist set. And this set includes brushes, paper, and paint from American Journey, uh, all provided by Cheap Joe's Art Stuff, our prize sponsor for this week. And more information on the Watercolor Summer Challenge, how you can enter and win, is available down below in the information box below the video.